Okay. What say you? Okay. Great. Let's do it. Okay, is perfect. K Jewelers. Okay, let's, um, let's, let's kill that. We don't need this. Oh, I don't have notes open. That's dumb. Oh, I have everything how will you know ready. what to say? I have everything I will ready. not know what to say if I do not have notes. All of that is ready. Everything's ready but that. That's really weird for me. Okay, yeah. there we go. Okay, now we have it. Yeah, how you know what to say? How you know what to say if you do not have notes? What words come out of mouth if you do not know? <laughs> All right, uh, here we go. Begins in uh, volume. Okay, three, two, one. You should give a f You really should, but only about things that set your soul on fire. Save those f**ks for magical f One love, y'all. Video games had nothing to do with it. This is the morning stream. Hold on to your butts. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to TMS. It's the morning stream for, uh, what is it? August 20th, 2019. It is episode 1771. And uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful day with Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett. Hi, Brian hurtling headlong into the fall oh no scott that that upsets me because i love summer so much i like summer too but i think i'm uh, i'm more of a fall guy i just wish <laughs> fall guy i wish fall the guy. i wish the fall lasted longer is my only thing like if, if fall was as long as summer i'd like fall better i think but fall Do for you? us lasts for like i mean we'll have uh probably tail end of september through maybe early November is fall for us and then it's snow. well it's probably about the same for yeah. you right you have a short fall same for us yeah, yeah. yeah. we have a short fall <laughs> I like ah. fall I like fall a lot fall's nice spring's nice summer's alright I guess mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm summer's going... all the fun stuff though you yeah, know that's true like think... uh, what do you do for fun road trips yeah and uh, fun travel yeah I don't do so much travel in the in the fall and the, the fall and winter yeah that's true uh i am going to the pool today so that'll be a thing oh see i was gonna go to the pool today i was gonna go to Waterworld, mm. which is this awesome uh movie oh awesome awesome movie awesome amusement park uh water park here in colorado i was gonna i basically planned everything out started putting coverville together uh which i usually do on tuesdays put it together on sunday after i took tina or tina went to the airport and thought all right good Head of the game, freelance done, Tuesday, boom. Um, because the big reason is kids went back to school last week. So finally, the water park is like, all right, now, you know, no waiting in line, any of that garbage. Guess yeah, what? Yeah. When the kids go back to school, they don't have any employees at the water park. So uh, they go to a weekend only schedule ah, until Labor Day. That's right, because so they get all that cheap was, child labor all year or all summer long. All that cheap child labor. I was all set, like, thinking great all right everybody all the kids are going back to school last week mm -hmm. this will be the perfect week for water world well it would have been, <laughs> would have been. I, I feel like uh you know holding john candy hostage at the front of the park and making him uh, take me on all the rides yeah it's... who's outside should have told you we don't have any teenagers working here anymore <laughs> We uh we are so our little community pools we have three three community pools within driving distance they're all part of our HOA whatever thing and uh, they're they're under they they do get understaffed when school starts up again but the pools run until Labor Day uh we're, we're Labor Day Labor Day yeah Labor Day is that Labor Day Labor wait. Day. Uh, yes, September. Labor Day is the end of the summer, Memorial Day, beginning of summer. I get those mixed know, up every time. Always get those mixed up. I don't know why. So do people. Uh, so do people on uh, Twitter who on Labor Day say, "I just want to give a big shout out to those veterans who gave their lives to." Uh, every year happens every year. Uh, I'm glad I've never done that. <laughs> I'm glad I've never done that. Um, but yeah, it throws me yeah. off. But anyway, uh, I think it's open till then, so we're gonna go today and just see if there are any, you know, funny people to watch. And oh, there'll be know, funny people to watch. We might take a little picnic or something. I don't know. There was talk of this yeah. yesterday. Who knows if it'll actually happen? The way my days go, I don't know. Tom Merritt's not back yet from vacation, so there's no current geek tonight. Wow. So we're thinking maybe the pool, and so I don't is he know. back tomorrow? 
Uh, I think he gets back to... I forget because he's... Shoot. I forget what he's doing. He's got, uh, It's in his tech. I'll have to dig back. It's in his text. He explained it all to me. He has a wackadoo schedule uh, with his vacation, but uh, I think he's back this week sometime. Whether it's in, in time for tomorrow's tech segment, I don't know. I guess we'll find mm, out. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. We are going to do a fun little thing today. Actually, yes. this is a continuation, I guess, of, uh, of what we've done before. So here's, uh, let's see, we need a clip for this. Let me play this one. Don't crush the food. All right. Don't crush the food. Uh, we received these uh, Biggs <laughs> brand uh, uh, sunflower seeds from. We did. What was the name? Uh, Sloan. Sloan. Sloan Kittering. Sloan. Sloan Orzachowski. Sloan, Sloan F- Fudaragi. I don't know what it is. Sloan Ozan. Ozan. Oh, there it is. Okay. <laughs> and it began with an O. Uh, we have two flavors that we have not tried from the batch. Uh, one is Big's brand Old Bay Seasoned, which I assume are just kind of like their standard flavor. And then they got the uh, Big's Chili Limon sunflower seeds that are based on the Tapatio brand salsa picante hot sauce mm, look at that yeah let me i'm gonna still hold up how much of the uh taco supreme uh sunflower seed bag i still have oh let me hold up how would i have that hold on <laughs> oh, throw it away what? then I'm, it's gone isn't I, it scott I it's have, empty i may have thrown it away let's see here ah darn it the bag's not here yeah yeah, it's. Uh, I ate all those. They were fantastic. <laughs> I loved that bag. Those were really, really good. I my only complaint about about those, and we'll see if it's the same with these other two. There's a lot of, uh, well, more than uh, more than I expected. Empty husks or empty shells, like um, oh. usually get the the occasional one. With this one, it felt like there were a few more than usually get per capita. In a bag of David's. I didn't notice that, but I did notice that they really dry me out. They're super salty. Like Yeah, they are super salty. I'm a big fan yeah. of the Spitz brands because I feel like I can, yeah. I can do more of these longer term sure. before I become a dried husk of a, of a wafer thin uh, piece of wood. Right, right. Uh, but these have been flavorful, and I also like that. So, uh, so far, so good. Let's try the, let's do the boring ones first. Let's do the Old Bay Seasoned. How is that boring? Do you what do you you hate lobsters, Scott? Well, do you hate uh, are they do you spo- hate crab? Are they supposed to be seafood flavored or are they just Old Bay seasoning is what you um what you cook your lobster and uh and crab and like you put that seasoning in the water and then you throw your your shellfish oh. in there. Quit being so shellfish, Scott. I didn't know that. This is all news to me. I didn't know what that stuff is. Um I'd be amazed if Kim hasn't used it in the past for for stuff she likes her seafood so it's possible yeah okay i'm not really a seafood guy but i'll eat it when she makes it all right so all here's right. uh here's uh these i'm gonna just crack one open here see what we think here mm. See, that just tastes like some flower seeds to me mm-hmm what do you think not a strong flavor no mm, a little bit it's a little i get at the tail end mm-hmm. yeah Oh yeah, I guess I get. I'm sensing a little, a little fish. <laughs> I'm, se- <laughs> I'm sensing a tiny what a time, fish. What a time for uh, Nightbot to be down. Uh, oh, is Nightbot down? Nightbot is currently down. Some people are having a hell of a time with um, oh. with the show titles like. Uh, That's too bad. Sensing a little fish and. Um, <laughs> well, someone just uh, write them down, and maybe they'll maybe it'll work. Or maybe we'll go through those after if someone just wow. writes them all down. Someone's wow. job. How, uh, someone's job today is to is to copy and paste out every submission. That's your job. Welcome Whoever. to welcome to 1980. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. Yeah, write it on a stone tablet, Kentucky Fried Computer. Yeah, bio, bio cow is, uh, is is on it. So these are good. These, you know these? are excellent. They're little, and you know what's they, good about these? They smell like wood, but they have uh, they have a good taste. They do smell like wood. Mm-hmm. The um. Uh, the good thing about these is they're less salty than the Taco Supreme, so mm-hmm. I can feel better about eating a bunch of these and not being like, like, all right, great, now I'm going to drink a glass of water and gain eight pounds from doing that combination. Well, then I have bad news for you because the chili yeah. limon look like they're very <laughs> salty. Um, they do see. look like they're salty. Sons, uh, sons of guns, don't they? Says huge seeds, double flavored in collaboration with Tapatio hot sauce gurus. All right. 
Tapatio. You think they really have What is your go to? Yeah. What is your go to um, hot sauce? And I'm not counting sriracha because I know you have an unhealthy love for sriracha. I do like sriracha a lot. It's starting to sound wrong. Sriracha. Sriracha. I think it's S R I R A C H A, right? So sriracha. 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 Anyway, whatever it is. Uh, anyway, for, so like, uh, are you a Cholula? Ch- yes, Ch- not Ch- she's my girl. Yeah. She's my girl. Yeah. I like her a lot. Yeah. I'll pour her on everything. Eggs, man. Oh, freaking. Uh, yeah, I like the I like the Cholula too. That's like uh, anything. Oh, it's so freaking good. She's that's great. my go-to. Yeah, I'm glad they have those. At, like way more than Tabasco. Tabasco is like, hey, look, I'm hot, but I'm gone now. No flavor. Yep. See ya. Yep, I'm kind of watery. How's it going? I punched you in the face and I ran. Yep. And I, I've been to their uh, bottling factory thing in Louisiana or in Mississippi or wherever the hell it was. I guess it was Louisiana. Mm-hmm. And um, it was interesting and cool. And they have a cool long history and everything. But I think it's just a watered down kind of not great thing now. It's not good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Here we go. Chili Limon. That said, the um, Chipotle. Um, these are going to be a problem. Good. These are going to be a problem. And these have a bite, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm screwed on these. Oh. <laughs> They're good. Time to put those under lock and key. That being said, the Tapatio brand that's on these, I'll have that at a table. That's good stuff, too. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, mm-hmm. If there's no Cholula, I'll do the Tapatio. Mm-hmm. I also do, I will say this about the uh, Tabasco. I do like the Chipotle Tabasco. Mm-hmm. And um, in a pinch, I'll do the green, the Tomatillo Tabasco. Oh, yeah, the green's all but right. The red, the red stuff is just... Is just uh, uh, it's a wash. It's a loss, you know? Yeah, it's just a punch in the eye and a trip to the shitter. <laughs> so what we need to what we need to do for Scott is, uh, for you, man, is get you a um, one of those timer feeding dishes that you, you do for your cat so that you don't leave them a big bowl of food when you go out of town. Mm-hmm. And it rotates at a timer and dumps a small amount of food in his bowl at a time. That's a good idea. Get one of those with these, uh, with these sunflower seeds. Just have a little bowl. It, All right, Scott, it's 8 o'clock. You get a few more of these little uh, <laughs> sunflower seeds. It needs to be, um, it also needs to be super, like, high security strength. I can't break into it. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I can't, just because a yeah. thing does a thing, it needs right. to and also. You reach in the back and just grab a handful. Right. That's bad. So it needs to be able to, I, I'm with you. It just needs to be able to block me out of, like, circumventing the rule. Because I get real, yeah. like this stuff will just, especially if I'm like, if I'm playing a video game or I'm drawing or something or I'm doing anything with focus, these things will be devoured in like a half an hour. And that's bad. Right. That's too much salt. That's way too much sodium. I mean, we're all going to have a heart attack just looking at looking at me. <laughs> yeah, that's good. All right. So I'd, I'd be right. Here's my rank. Uh, the chili limon. Mm-hmm. Chili limon. Uh-huh. Then the taco supreme. Then the old bay seasoned. Although... The Old Bay Seasoned has an advantage that it's less salty than the other two and probably less guilt. That's true. If I had to uh, if I had to rate them, uh, I think I might like the Taco Bell ones better because I, I'm not a huge fan of the lemon part. I like the, mm. the hot sauce really? flavor, okay. but I don't love I don't mm-hmm. love the lemon kind of tinged everything or lime rather. Uh yeah. So for me, I think the Taco Bell ones, but just barely. These these are good too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you got your own weird uh, regional sunflower seeds or any kind of other kind of weird food, uh, you want us to try? Yeah, Brian and I take all comers uh, on the website. There's an address to my PO box. Brian's got one as well. Uh, just reach out to us. We'll get you uh, hooked up. Just, and, yeah, send me an email if you want mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll hook you up, and or you'll hook us up, I guess. And we'll have if some you want, I can give you I can give you the address to my PO box, and you can put it on here as well. Oh, we should do that. Why don't we do that? On the website. That's silly that we don't. Yeah, why don't we do that? That's dumb. Okay, we're doing that. That's the thing we're gonna do. I like to eat. My okay. PO box. Yeah. <laughs> my PO box. There's a uh, so it's at a um, a post net. Mm. I think we've talked about this on the show, and and there's a very specific like you have to have all five lines of information. Like you have to have Coverville in there. You have to have um, the address of the post net, you have to have PMB 12. Mm. Cause if you don't have my mailbox, even though it's going to post net and it's going to coverville, they can't figure out, I don't know which box to put this in <laughs> and they will bounce it back. If you don't, um, 
if you don't have all five items. And I, I attribute it to the the uh, dictator that runs the PostNet. Oh. <laughs> this guy is so bad that if you go to the Yelp for this particular PostNet, that's right. People people have complained specifically about this dude and how he he'll charge you two dollars to tape your box shut. I remember this. You were I think you've yes. talked about this guy before because the way mine works there. Um, it was a post net to begin with, but then yeah. I didn't like it. It was, it was weird how they were it notifying me. Like the independent. Ad, yeah. Well, they're just there because po- the way post net works is they don't have their own shops necessarily. If they don't have one, they'll partner with somebody else for one. And that's what yeah. this was. And so the partner was like, well, we still do this. You just don't have to use the app or pay them the fee. And I went, Oh, so wait, you're telling me for like less money, you'll do this. And it's the same. And if I need to just check, I just call. Instead of the app, I just call you and say, hey, anything to pick up. They said, yeah, you can just do that. Right. So that's what we do now. Uh, and it's been great. See, that's the way to do it. Yeah, it's been good. Very nice lady runs the place. She goes, See, listen, I, if you're I, ever I in trouble, you're ever in trouble, I'll drive it out to your home. I'll bring it to you, she says. <laughs> I'm like, you're not going to do that. You're so nice, Gladys von Finkelstein. You're fine. <laughs> oh, here's the best part, by the way. Mm. Uh is is if you if you do Yelp and leave a bad review, yeah, uh, then the the owner will reply and be like get super critical defensive. So uh, Linda F said, "I went there to mail a letter. I noticed that I needed a small piece of tape to secure it. I asked the woman behind the counter if I could get a piece of her tape behind the counter. She told me no and to buy my own. How rude! I will never do business there when I need it. These people are petty and don't know how to get and keep customers." Wow. Reply from the owner. I was doing work on the copy machine when you came in and insisted we give you tape to drop off a USPS letter we didn't ship for you. If you are paying us for a service, we'd be happy to give you some tape. If you are just dropping something off, that package letter needs to be ready for transport or we do charge for our supplies and the service is a big sign on our counter states. Oh, please. Come on. Come on. Piece of tape. A little piece of tape. He's that. uh, Are you sure Richard Cheese isn't running that place? What's going on over there? (laughs) That's bad. Uh, here's another one. All oh right. my god, here's a long one. All right. Take your business elsewhere if you can. Overpriced and rude. I've been here twice and my mother was once. That was more than enough. The manager is a very rude man. I'm shocked he still has a business. Blah blah blah. Yeah. He says, Once again, another customer wanting free packaging supplies and service. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's this guy is kinda like somebody we should follow. What's the most recent um uh, recent Yelp reply he's done. Is this is this an ongoing uh, thing we could check into every once in a while and see how he's doing? It'd be fun to it'd be fun to have the you know do read these like uh, uh, like um, old British mm. uh, <laughs> old British uh, dapper man. He reminds once me once again another customer wanting free packaging supplies and service. <laughs> As anyone can see, almost all of the negative reviews are from people dropping off free UPS, FedEx, and DHL packages, <laughs> expecting free packaging supplies and service. <laughs> Seriously, we should bookmark it, check in, just see if there's any new ones I once like in a while. Idea. Yeah, I do like that idea. Yes, the freaking Basil Faulty of shipping services. <laughs> Just a cranky, Faulty. That's hilarious. Cranky yes. old Betty. All right. Yeah, unfortunately, it's like two blocks away from my house, so it'd be you know, if, if I wanted to get a, a PO box at the uh, the post office, it would be a, a hell of a drive. Is it like a soup Nazi thing where you have to go in there and be all careful when you're like in line asking for stuff and just being all you know? <laughs> Well, no, it's more like um, it's more like you walk in and uh, if you don't have everything ready, you're just going to get charged. Just expect it that, uh, you know, you're the boy, more people complaining. The more I scroll through this and this goes all the way back to like 2016, yeah. more people complaining about tape. Yeah. Tape is the big thing there. Yeah, it's all about like tape. all you have to do is just offer some tape and you'll get a few more stars, dude. If I were those people. I would go in there with a roll of tape and my untaped package and I would plop it down <laughs> and I would go, just a second, I must apply this tape I brought for myself because there's none here and this and then tape it in front of him and smile at him the whole time, never I, break eye contact. I kind of want to uh, like cover myself, like make a, a uh, just basically mummify myself with packing tape yeah. and then go in there with a the box and ask for <laughs> ask them to tape it shut. <laughs> 
<laughs> Please tape box shut. <laughs> If you do that, you have to film it. and. <laughs> well, I wouldn't do it if I, yeah, if I wasn't filming it. I would have to see that. That's amazing. Well, all right then. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Bagheera says tape is not cheap. <laughs> really? Isn't it cheap? If you got a little roll of tape, it's of course it's cheap. I have stacks of it over here that I ship tubes in. Stacks of tape that I get at Costco for nothing. Like it costs. I mean, what is it by the foot, Bagheera? Oh, my gosh. It's so get, cheap. Sure. I mean, getting a... Getting a, a, a 24 pack or an eight pack like i do every once in a while of the the stuff you and i probably use to tape our boxes shut yeah um like it's expensive but you're getting a ton of it what is it per foot you know well i, I don't know like let's think about it so i get a i get a stack of those a for of tape i want to say I, pay, I bought like six rolls for nine bucks i think that sounds right i don't know yeah, how much is in a roll right. though i'd have to do the math here but i don't think it's it's got to be pennies i mean mm -hmm. maybe 10 cents or something? I don't know. Those places are a rip. Whatever. But Garrett, look, look at you bat, uh, going to bat for the for the, 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 the <laughs> for guy. Postnet. Yeah. Dice Tomato, too. They're kind of in the... Yeah. They're also in the business of using packing tape. Well, they're in the business of using it, but, uh, you know, I mean, it's... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sidian says I mean, it's well, like going I mean, into a donut store and for... saying, give me a free donut. It's not the same as that. Very different. Very different. It's not the same. All right. Here, let me put it this way. Um, if, if what people are saying is that people should have a lower expectation for tape being a thing that is a incidental. Okay, yes. fine. But if you're in a restaurant and you say, I need a napkin, they don't go, sorry, you didn't bring your own napkins. That'll cost you 50 cents for this extra napkin. Like, it feels like a thing right, that you should right. just kind of have. I don't know. Maybe I'm, uh, maybe we're smoking crack here. I don't know. Maybe. You know, I mean, I'm thinking about it. Like, all right, these people are getting, like, their Amazon. They're doing an Amazon return. And so they're getting the free packing, um, the shipping label from Amazon. Right. I can't believe you guys are kind of turning me around on this guy. Who is a dick? Come on. Let's, let's, <laughs> yeah, he's a dick either way. Let, don't let that don't let that, that part wave, you know, uh, waft by yeah. like a fart in the wind. <laughs> but... Um, uh, you know, if you if you're bringing off a UPS thing, you're basically dropping it off. You're asking him for tape. He's not making any money on that transaction. However, I, I would be more inclined to go back and 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 use his and pay for his services, which I do. Mm -hmm. um, not just the PO box, but I pay for other things that I do there. Uh, uh, more inclined if he were to, you know, be generous with some of the other things. Has he ever said, uh, yeah, I think tape, I just think it's how you think about it. Tape to him should be a way, that's clearly because of all the complaints about tape, uh, tape mm -hmm. for him should be a way to retain customers and not piss them off right. and not have them on Yelp, right. you know, yelling about him and then him having to go defend himself. Free tape, exactly. free tape is a way to solve all that, to calm it all down and not cost you very much money. It's not like people are coming oh. in going, give me three rolls of that tape. They're saying, give me a strip this long. It's no big deal. Yes, right, exactly. The, um, you know, and, and the, the best solution, UPS and FedEx should supply him with tape. Right, that's also they a good keep point. Him, yep. They should keep him taped up and <laughs> like, <laughs> fully taped. And, uh, and you know, make UPS and FedEx uh, branded, or not branded, but like promotional looking tape, right? So it's tape that has UPS, UPS, UPS logo, like all the way down it so that you go, there well, you go. And that's the, that's probably the, the whole twist here is that he now lives in a world. He lives in a modern era where there is a lot of returns happening. And because he is a uh, uh, certified UPS FedEx drop off slash shipping place. Um, mm -hmm. because people get stuff from Amazon and go, oh, this isn't the size I wanted. I'm taking it back. Where can I take it? Oh, I can take it there. Like right. he's right. been, he's had a whole new influx of the kind of people who are just dropping off shit and not actually right. spending and any money using, there. Right, exactly. And that I totally get it. <clears throat> I mean, <Yeah>. but <laughs> this is coming from a couple of guys who give away free content like there's no tomorrow with the hopes that you'll come back, you'll enjoy it so much that you will pay for your services. Right. I mean, there's a, there's always that, right? There's always that. Come here for this, stay for that. You know, right? So exactly. If, if you're gonna go, if you're enjoy gonna enjoy the free, enjoy the free podcast. Buy a T-shirt. And I love. And you know what? If his policy is just a really strict one about we don't do tape, how about instead of going no tape, how about instead you mm -hmm. say 
Oh, I'm sorry. We're we have a policy. It's you know we have to we have to give less tape. We'll let it go this time, but you know next right. time. Right. Yes, exactly. The, the his Yelp responses could be a little less terse. Yeah. And say, oh, I, I apologize. You know, instead be like instead of the sarcasm and the, uh, yeah, the like, I hate customers. Yet attitude, another maybe. customer comes in. Yeah. Just... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's very funny. Um, all right. Well, well done. Hey, I uh, got an update to the yeah. dog chewing corners of the pillow thing. Yeah, yeah, the pillow, right. Kevin Choik. Is that how you'd say that? That name? Choik? Kevin Chiok. Chiok. We'll call it. We'll say that's right. Chiok. Uh, yesterday, you are without honor. <laughs> he says this. Hi, Scott. Heard your dog problems with the pillows. First, what kind of dog toys does Boomer like or have? And I got to thinking about it, and she kind of has a mix. She has some hard toys, soft toys, and some other stuff. There's no um, no typical kind that she prefers over others? No, she doesn't care if they... Although, early when she was a puppy, she liked the squeaking kind, but now she doesn't really... That doesn't drive her anymore. Um, mm -hmm. She seems to like two different kinds now. It's either like some kind of soft uh, thing made out of yarn or fabric, or... She likes a bone, like a hard bone. Uh, I okay. mean, who doesn't like a hard bone once in a while is what I'm saying. Who doesn't? But, but okay, so but there's not... There's she doesn't tend to gravitate towards one thing over another. No, those two are about equal. Daisy's, Daisy's a soft toy mm. aficionado. She prefers... She has a little rat that we got at Ikea. That's not even a little rat. It's like one of their big rats at Ikea that she just... She loves and she'll walk around with. Oh, nice. Big giant, like, yeah. uh, stuffed rat type deal. So yep, exactly okay, okay so so I, I you know and the tr and truth is if you put both in front of her I think she might gravitate as long as the bone's not covered in meat or you know is otherwise desirable uh, she right. would probably go for the soft one <laughs> that's a uh, right that, that that kind of sways the uh, <laughs> yeah it does it ruins the <laughs> argument no matter what kind of dog you yeah. have it doesn't work so yeah. anyway he says most likely boomer uh, likes soft and furry uh, what you need is to associate replace and associate again which I've never heard of he says first. Uh, Sorry, for the first associate uh, is something bad, like a soda can with pebbles in it you shake next to her head when Boomer starts mm -hmm. chewing. Then put the can down and give the toy uh, the replace. Uh, the pour in the praise? I don't get that. Anyway, what does that uh, mean? Does that make give sense? Give them the toy, the replacement. Yeah. Then pour, probably then pour on the praise and love. Oh, it's pour like poor Boomer guy and then in the praise. It's kind of, It just threw me. Yeah, you're right. I, I think you're poor on the praise and love the um, uh, and love the boomer takes it. I think the, I think he wrote this with his Kevin, phone. Kevin typed. The, uh, <laughs> Kevin probably used the the uh, speak to text or something like it that. It might have been. Yeah. Yeah. Alarm, please dictate. Right. <laughs> exactly. That didn't make mine go off. You guys should be fine. Um, anyway, so uh, uh, I think he's I think he's on to something. I think Kevin's right. <laughs> he's in the chat room. Jinx six twenty one is Kevin, yeah. and uh, yep, he's saying uh, yeah. Pour on the praise is what he meant. Yeah, P O U R on the praise. Uh, but the the pour in the praise sounds like a famous old novel from like the seventeen hundreds. Sounds like uh, yeah, sounds like an old British uh, an old British drama. Yeah, the pour in the praise, on, baby, followed by <laughs> the pour on the praise. Mystery theater presents the pour in the praise. Anyway. Next up, who took my sandwich? <laughs> well, not Mystery Theater. Masterpiece Theater. I forgot what that was called. Masterpiece Theater. Presents the poor. Because it's P-O-O-R. It sounds like some kind of like turn of the century industrialized British. The poor on the prey. It's pretty good. Anyway, uh, so that's the deal. We're going to try that. And a uh, big thanks to Kevin for his fine suggestion. Because Yeah, think that's a, that right. is a really good idea. We've been doing a lot of that stuff with um, Remus. Because he's gotten in the habit of figuring out that he can jump from the back of the couch to our kitchen counter or the we have a bar above the kitchen counter like where our and our echo show sits and mm -hmm. keys and sunglasses and stuff go in there go up there and it's uh you know it's a place where we can put things to keep away from all the animals because it's way high up well not anymore so we have the we have the the pet smart clicker click click click, click. Mm -hmm. and then we've got a little squirt bottle and so we do the we're teaching them you want to teach your your pets this is the the um dog whisper in me mm. you want to teach them a verbal and then a noise and then a squirt mm. so that so that eventually you'll be able to scale it down to the verbal and the noise and then just the verbal so you, and, and you don't want to use no you want to reserve no for don't run in the street you're gonna get hit by a car yeah. you want to do uh-uh you know and that's the noise you make for 
forgetting to stop doing stuff. Right. Oh, that makes sense. So you do. So you do. Uh. Uh-uh, uh. Click. Click. Squirt. <laughs> oh, nice. So a it sounds like I'm sounds like I'm creating a new song for the film Chicago, doesn't it? Uh. Uh-uh, uh. Squirt. <laughs> so it's like a sound. How'd you put it? A verbal? No. How'd you, give me the three steps. Yeah. A verbal. A verbal. A click and a squirt. Okay. So that ver- sounds or, 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 like the three steps to a good time at Brian's house on a Saturday night. <laughs> Just like a Saturday night at Bit's house. <laughs> No, that seems smart. That's a really good uh, yeah. dog whispery piece of advice. Yeah. I mean, yeah. is that... Is then, that then you scale it back to just the two, and it's working great. Like, basically, we're at we're at the stage where we're doing the squirt occasionally, but we're we're still using the clicker, and pretty soon we'll just be able to scale it to to just the uh uh-uh. And that's and does the cat? Because for the, for that those shits. at home listening who uh, don't know what this is, <laughs> but that's a cat you're talking about with Cicero. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh oh, Cicero Seven Lipschitz, Squish. I can't remember what the. Uh, I don't remember it. All the the Chicago. But this uh, is a cat, are. right? You're talking this is about. A cat. This is a kitten. This okay. is the kitten. All yeah. right. So you are training. He will. He will train to voice because our cat could care less what I say. He doesn't care. Oh really? Yeah. He's a jerk. Uh, get the squirt bottle and he will care what you say. Okay. He will listen. Okay. Yeah. That seems. And like you won't have trick. to use the squirt bottle for very long, just long enough to associate it with the thing that you want him to stop doing, like, or associate it with the noise and uh, and uh, and uh oh. Uh, what's really funny is um, watching him and um, and Inara. They're getting along now, sort of. You can tell when she's just over it. Yeah. She just doesn't want anything to do with it anymore. But he basically he does the thing where he kind of just walks up casually to her, and then kind of just grabs her around the neck, and she still doesn't do anything. And then he like takes her down, and he's a little tiny thing, and she's this big, fluffy, mm-hmm. you know, dense <laughs> cat. And uh, and it's not until he finally pins her down that she hisses and kicks and like runs off. Wow. But the little one still wants to go. He's ready to go. He wants to keep going, right? He wants to keep going. Yeah, yes, he's not exactly. done. He's not done. Captain Kipper, what are you sending? Hold on. This is a video that somebody put on TikTok. Uh, a couple days ago and this oh. was on this was on the news it's the uh mr sandman with a yeah bring me a, a dream ding, 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 yeah, ding, ding, exactly. ding. Okay, yeah there's a lot of uh for whatever reason uh when it once a trend hits tiktok you'll see a billion just like this it's yeah kind exactly, of obnoxious sure. yeah and then the songs are in your head for like a week it's it's bad yeah, yeah. This, this thing was on oh local news it's almost like you've run out of things to tell us about yeah <laughs> Look at this cat on TikTok. It's gone viral. Something. Here's our. This is from our trending session, and you know it's because they've hired somebody who um, wants to just surf Twitter and Facebook and Tumblr and and all these things all day long. Yeah. And and say, so, well, we can have a segment that's kind of the lighter side, and I'll go ahead and just be your Twitter and Tumblr guy. And uh, yep. They'll call it <laughs> cyberspace section. Check right, it out. Exactly. This this here's, week, some here's kid, what's trending. Yeah, yeah. a kid bit his fi- but his brother's finger and said, "Ouch, that hurts." It's gone. <laughs> it's gone viral. I'm like, stop it. Just stop it. Right. right. Freaking news. The local news. All is Twitter is a buzz with this this uh, Icelandic guy who runs out and jumps on his swimming pool and it's frozen solid and he lands on his tailbone. Can you believe it? Oh, <laughs> oh Bill, what's our what's our weather going to be like today? <laughs> well, we, we won't be having any frozen swimming pools today, I'll tell you that. Ugh, uh, ugh. It's literally... some highs in the uh, low 90s today. And... I'm actually nauseous thinking about it because people, <laughs> that's what people do. That is exactly what people do, yeah. That's local news. It's so bad. I know we have some, you know, foreign voices in the chat and that listen to the show. Yeah. Do you guys have local news that's as embarrassing as ours? Cause, or is that just an America thing where it's that bad? Or can I go to, like, the Netherlands and a guy will get up and go, horky dorky dorky and do a bunch of dumb stuff, too? Because it feels like it's just us. All right, Gidget says it's uh, down unders like that. B- Rainbow Bright, where are you? Canada doesn't count. You guys are the same as yeah. us. I mean, you count, but yeah, it's a. I mean, it's a local news thing. They, you know, they want to make sure that they combine the uh, lighter side with the, with the you know, the heavy stuff that's going on in other parts of the world. I guess so. <laughs> this guy on t- I don't know if you saw this it's gone viral <laughs> he's uh figured out how to put a whole ping pong ball up his nostril <laughs> can you believe that <laughs> Phil 
I hate it. Well, we're going to have some blockage like that over on the 405 <laughs> as uh, people are leaving to go to work. <laughs> they always, it's sometimes the most awkward uh, transition over, you know, from from the uh, from the stupid trending video to whatever's coming next. And they have to figure out some way to tie it together. Yeah, I hate it. <laughs> I don't like it. Well, it looks like that dog is having a really good time. Hey, our uh, drivers aren't going to be having a really good time <laughs> as the 110 is backed up all the way to uh, Lombard Street. <laughs> speaking of uh, <laughs> speaking of things being jammed up your nose, it's uh, flu and cold season, isn't it, Janet? <laughs> That's right. People really are exactly. bad. Oh, yeah, I remember PM Magazine. Darth yeah, Mark, magazine. Darth oh Marcus, my god! Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, that was. Uh, the, it was regional That's and local, right. locally applied. But I think it was like a national thing, and then you just kind of had your own local version of it, and you kind of franchised it. I think that's is how that the it way worked. it is. I, I felt like it was. Um, I felt like it was. It was national, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah, I it was syndicated. It was, I thought it was local. It was, made, no? it was made nationally, but syndicated. Oh, okay. I, I didn't realize that. I thought they just. Had a maybe format, not, maybe. and everybody just made their own or something. So, like, basically, they just said, "Here's here's what you do for PM Magazine." Yeah, here's the basic structure. It's like here's a McDonald's. You're gonna run it, but you're making burgers on a local level, like that. I thought that's okay. what it was like. I, I thought it was. It, I could be wrong, but uh, um, wow, Matt Lauer, Tom Bergeron, Lisa Gibbons started out on PM Magazine. Whoa, Dennis Miller, really? Would do like a humorous closing piece similar to Andy Rooney's commentary on 60 Minutes. <laughs> listen, babe. Listen. Yeah, listen, chat, chat. It's, uh, you know, this guy's looking at that piece of candy like he's uh, <laughs> Bill Mitchell about to size up the latest Cleveland Cavalier. Oh, that guy. <laughs> he was not the best weekend news update guy. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. I, I, I liked him at the start, but he did get kind of. Uh, got a little old after a while. Got a little old. The wow, answer Robert that... Guillaume even hosted a star-studded super special of Whoa. PM Magazine. Robert <laughs> Guillaume? Uh, Benson's Benson? Benson! Oh, yes, wow. Benson's Benson. That's fantastic. Oh, my God, Chef Tell. Yeah, I totally remember PM Magazine. Remember Chef Tell? No, that name's not familiar. He was Chef. a German... Oh, man. God, it was... Uh... Oh, I wish I could remember. We got to find some... Let me see if I can find it. Oh, YouTube the guy with the mustache and the... And the he yes. Looked, he looked like Dick Dick Buckus or somebody. Um... But he sounded like uh, Hogan's Heroes uh, Colonel Clink. <laughs> 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 Hold on. We got to find some Chef Tell. Oh, wait, that has to exist, right? Yeah, here we go. Uh, -E just want to make sure we find one that's from the 80s. Is it just T-E-L-L? -L? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. There's a bunch Oh, I found one the... from the 80s. Here yeah. you go. I'm going to play this. Okay. Let's see what right. we get. Hold on. Eye right. <laughs> uh, on Tampa Bay, it says. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Liz Bruner filling in for Kathy Fountain today. Now, if you're tired of turkey or... Hold on. Or... Liz Bruner sitting in for Kathy Fountain. I just want to put that out there. That's Great. fantastic. Uh, thank All right. You. Here we go. <laughs> happy with ham or if you just want to add a little something special to this year's holiday table we've got just the menu for your holiday meal are you so happy get with ham a piece of paper and a pencil because for the I'm next right half hour we're going to tease your taste buds with a cayman christmas dinner and i'm sure you're going to want to write down how you can get the recipes please welcome our master chef entrepreneur and restaurateur none other than chef tell is with us today Hi. Hi. okay here we go we're going to get some talking thank you you are going to make a Cayman Christmas dinner for us. What is a Cayman Christmas dinner? Hi, Christmas time in, in Cayman, so you used to eat just seafood or lobster or maybe a little beef or so because the island, they just had fish on, you know, there what? was not much there. <laughs> you know, this show wouldn't happen if Kathy Fountain was here. No. <laughs> Kathy Fountain had a much tighter control on quality and, and understanding. He didn't. I didn't understand any of that. Did you? <laughs> I like that we got a German cook on a Florida talk show to talk about Cayman Christmas. Yep, and everybody in that I audience. Florida Cayman. All right, Cayman in Florida. That's a little closer, but. 
they're doing like camera pans of the audience, and every <laughs> everybody's like George's parents, like a thousand years old. <laughs> I'm sure. All sitting out there. Let me play a little more. Uh, Last few years, they've changed a little bit. So, for Christmas, for a lot of Americans come down as tourists, or people from Europe, and so we just make a beautiful, nice lobster dish. That's really too you you I I, I I'm pretty good at picking up accents. I can't hear him. Yeah. I can't hear him. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Make sure when you get the lobster, you take it to the chopper. <laughs> if you want to live. <laughs> uh, that's good stuff. Well, I enjoyed the hell out of that. <laughs> nice detour, everybody. Nice detour. This is yes. your radio newscaster with another exclusive sensational summary of world and local events. Hey, it's the news, and look who it's brought to us by. Brought to you by Frog Pants Plays. Today at noon. Noon o'clock, everybody. Frogpants.tv for the live stream. What are you going to be playing today? Well, so I was playing this horror game, but there's a bug where I got stuck in a room and you're, can't sorry, get out. Playing, playing what? A horror game. Horror game, okay. Horror. <laughs> not not a horror game. <laughs> horror game. Hey, y'all tune in. I've been playing this horror game. Uh, yeah, it, I got stuck in this room and it won't let me out and there's nothing I can do. Oh, and I've still? looked it up. Yeah, it's a total bug. It's bugged out and my only save out, there's no save outside of it. So I'd have to start over. Mm -hmm. So I'm pissed oh, and it ain't going to happen unless somebody can figure out a way to break that bug or shoot me forward. So instead, in loving memory of Rudger Hauer, I found out today mm -hmm. or yesterday that there's a game called The Observer, which is like this cyberpunk horror game that has Rugger Hauer in it, and he narrates it the whole time, and it sounds awesome, so I'm going to be oh, playing nice. that today. <laughs> the Observer. I installed software at The Observer back in uh, 1987 or 97. Ah, <laughs> uh, The Observer. I actually, I'm pretty sure I did. Let's see. The yeah, Cincinnati what would it Observer, Cincinnati, Cincinnati Observer. Hold on. Paper, newspaper, yeah. and Observer. Newspaper observer. observer. Here we go. The Observer. There's probably a few, right? There are a few. I'm trying to think what the most famous one would be. Uh, Jamaica has think. one. Raleigh has one. So North Carolina, the Raleigh Observer. Sure. Um, oh, Raleigh. I might have. I, I think I did install it, Raleigh, because I did Raleigh, the Greensboro News Press, News Times, Greenboro, Greensboro. How about oh, the, Charlotte Observer. Yeah. I think there was a Charlotte there's one Charlotte? as well. Charlotte? Okay. There's a Fayetteville yep. as well. There's a few of them, it looks like. A yeah. lot, lot of stuff in... Uh, oh, yeah, Charlotte's the top one. Mm -hmm. That's probably the one you did. I think that's the one I did, the Charlotte Observer, yeah. Brian's. Yeah, because then I did New Bern. Oh, man. Uh, you know what? North Carolina? Uh, if I didn't live in Colorado, North Carolina would be one of the places that I would consider moving because you go to uh, you go to the coast and Wilmington... Not mm -hmm. Wilmington. Wilmington's Delaware. Uh, uh, you're shoot. thinking of... Um... Oh, I know what you're thinking of. The beach area, the beachy yeah. stuff. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Whatever that's called. See if I can find it before the uh, before the chat room. Here's your chance. I'm not going to. Oh, it is Wilmington. Okay. <laughs> Wilmington, North Carolina. For some reason, that didn't sound right. But Wilmington is beautiful. Um, New Bern, Raleigh, Charlotte is beautiful. Yeah. Durham's okay. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to live in the research triangle, but... Uh, there's a lot of game yeah, well, development out there. North Carolina is rad. Mm -hmm. It's a cool, cool place. It really is. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't. It'd be one of the states I'd consider if I was moving. Totally. Mm -hmm. uh, Dan lives out there. You could see him once in a while. Oh, Asheville. <clears throat> yep, Asheville is. Yeah, yeah. Asheville's Asheville. Nice. They say Asheville. Asheville. Yes. Yeah. Asheville. Because they don't know how to say stuff. Too far inland. There. Yeah, that's. <laughs> Kadavari says, "What does Coverville mean by Durham is okay?" I guess Kadavari is in Durham. It's all right. I mean. I would rather be closer to the coast. I'd rather be, I mean, you know, like I said, Wilmington. I mean, I guess Greensboro is further inland than Durham, and Raleigh is as well. That's true. Yeah, if you want coast. Oh, I can't handle being yeah. on the coast, Rainbow Bright. I'd love it. The only problem I have with coastal towns is they're just too crowded. That's my only problem. Mm -hmm. Too many damn people. Would you live in Cape Fear, Scott? Um, I hear the... I hear every movie you go to is a laugh riot. Even I, if it's a sad movie, you go in there and go, ha, ha, ha. Well, up until that film sack episode, the only Cape Fear I ever saw was that Simpsons one. That was it. <laughs> That's right. The crowd that not crusty, but uh, uh, Sideshow Bob one, yes. Yeah, which is excellent. It's a fine episode. Yep. Uh, all right, in today's news, uh, oh, and just to clear up something in the chat, I didn't 
the game I didn't quit the game because it's scary. I want to keep playing that game. It's good. Yeah. It's like really good, but it's buggy is the problem. It's got bugs. It's funny you're in a situation that I'm in with No Man's Sky where I've gotten I've built a uh, I've got a base on mm -hmm. my planet, a nice mm -hmm. cool round base, and I've got a a couple people working in that base, but I need to go uh, search abandoned buildings for nanites, mm -hmm. and the first and the building it tells me to go to, I can't get any nanites out of it. Like it's got a oh like a, a malfunctioning. Um, malfunctioning portal and you do a search for this online you find a thousand people with the same problem so i'm hoping they fix that but i can do other quests in the meantime it's but not it's so so it's not it's so it's a known bug some other people it's are a known it. bug oh, okay yeah yeah so exactly. that's if, if they're yeah if they're giving you specific coordinates you can't get them there because you can get nanites in lots of other ways but if every place yeah exactly yeah. And, I've, and i've even gone to other buildings and gotten nanites but it says nope you got to go this there's a specific building with this little icon over it fly over there and mm. and uh and fix it yes you can get slave labor in no man's sky now that is the thing sidian is that now in my base i have a bunch of people doing all the grindy crap Mm -hmm. that i hate doing yep <laughs> yeah they'll they'll go out and get your uh, basically they'll farm the, the uh, minerals you need for like keeping your ship stuff going and all that yeah. uh you can get them to i think they'll run the you can do actual farming now yeah and yeah. i think they'll manage that for you if you do it right i think they will i think i, I haven't, haven't messed to that point because uh, i can't get the nanites we I, just want the nanites i've done so <laughs> little with my base i spend most of my time in space running missions like go down to the surface mine some gold bring it oh, back oh you're doing the mercenary stuff right yeah and it's good money i'm like i don't know i got like 60 million dollars in credits or more than that mm -hmm. like 300 million or something whatever it is anyway hey anyway. jimmy kimmel live that's a show you've heard it before you've seen it that's probably. a show i watch yeah it's good yeah jimmy that's kimmel my, that's my go-to of the uh the the night the talk shows the late night talk shows it's so funny it's the one i thought would never last and it did gr i know great yeah that's because jimmy jimmy grew the f up in the last oh yeah <laughs> 10, 15 years i mean remember the man show mm -hmm. and win ben stein's money and that sort of thing he's not he's not frat boy jimmy anymore man he's actually uh he's all and he gets up. the yeah, he gets the the he, he's more I think he's the nerdiest of all of the talk show hosts cuz he loves the MCU stuff. He always gets those guys on his show and mm -hmm. and knows what he's talking about with the comics and Star Wars and stuff like that. Yeah, I think he might be the guy for me as well. I certainly like it more yeah. than I like it more than Tonight Show. There's nothing wrong with Jimmy Fallon. Yeah, Fallon just not my Fallon thing. just cracks himself up too much. Yeah, he's just laughing at himself most of the time. But I and Seems I like, like a nice guy, but I like Colbert, but I prefer Colbert as a fake journalist or fake show host the way he was with his Colbert show back in the day yeah. more than I like him yes. as a real dude. Um, still funny, still relevant, whatever. Letterman's the all time granddad for me, and that's who I'll always love the most. But because I grew up with him, I can't help it. Uh, all right, Jimmy Kimmel, sorry, Jimmy Kimmel Live uh, got in trouble though, they got hit with a $395,000 yeah. fine from the Federal Communications Commission because they used some emergency tones during a skit. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that, Brian, turns out. Right, right. It's not in the, it's not in the cards. It's a bad, yeah. a bad thing, yes. Simulated wireless alert tones used on Jimmy Kimmel Live skit made uh, making fun of a presidential alert test have cost Walt Disney Company slash ABC 395 grand. That's a drop in the frickin' bucket for them, but whatever. Uh, in civil fines with the U.S. FCC, um, AMC Network separately on Thursday agreed to pay one hundred and four thousand fine for an alert tone in a February twenty nineteen episode of The Walking Dead. I, I didn't hear about that. Well, that's cool. No, it's funny. I'm curious about uh, mm -hmm. about. I, I guess we stopped watching before then or something because I don't remember that. But when are they doing a, a an emergency alert tone? Yeah, I don't know what that would even be unless it was in the soundtrack or not in the world. I mean, or, things are too de right, decrepit. Or like flashback or something. Yeah, can't figure that one out. But anyway, the commission handed down similar fines or smaller fines to Discovery, uh, Discovery's Animal Planet and um, Morello Radio Holdings. I don't know what that is. It's a channel I'm not <laughs> familiar with. The use of emergency alert systems or wireless alert system tones are barred by the FCC rules to avoid confusion when the tones are used. Uh, alert fatigue among listeners and false activation of the system by the activation... Or sorry, operative data elements contained in the alert tones. So there's actual data in those tones. Yeah, uh, yeah you're not it, supposed to use them. Basically, you don't want to be the boy who beeped wolf. Yeah, basically. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now here's the, here's the funny thing. We can play them. Yeah. And not get in trouble 
because the FCC doesn't control podcasting at all. Sure. I think that's hilarious. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like YouTube and freaking uh, us and uh, Twitch and whatever. All of that, all that kind of quote unquote new media. I know we're not saying that anymore, but but that stuff. Right. No regulation in that regard. No fines for us. We can do whatever we want. Nope. No, we'll get fined for other things like playing a Milli Vanilli track. But yeah. <laughs> um, so so Jimmy Kimmel Alive. All right, they use in a skit. Totally get that. Walking Dead. Yeah. They use it for some plot point. I'm wondering about the Discovery's Animal Planet, where they used emergency simulated emergency tones. Yeah, like what was, was that? Jackson Galaxy's My Cat from Hell, like uh, issuing <laughs> doing some sort of skit about a cat sending out emergency tones. Or let's see if I can find it here. ABC Find. Let's see. I'm trying to find where it's just that. Um, yeah. There's lots Were of reports of all this stuff. One, yeah. yeah. I can't find it. It's all it's all headlined by Jimmy Kimmel. Ah, it sucks. I can't find it. I don't. I want to hear it, but I don't know what I'm actually looking for. Emergency alert tones. Let's try this. Emergency alert tones. All right, nobody. Hey guys, listening, both here and at home. This is not mm -hmm. a real emergency. What I'm about to play. Okay. Oh God. Oh God. All right. You're all doing right. it. You're I'm doing it, do man. It. You're I doing just, it. I just want them to know. That that's not this you're just not gonna that's not what it is. Alright, here we go. Okay. Alright. Here's the tent sound, I think. Alright, everyone. SPC Cranford here. Ugh. It's been a while. Hold on. Uh, I don't need oh, some... this is the guy. So this is the guy's channel he's talking about. Just this, some huh? YouTuber guy. I don't want that. Maybe it's this one. Emergency broadcast system. YouTubers sounds. are the worst. They kind of are the worst sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they're bad. All right, what's this? <laughs> All right, here we go. Wait. Okay, this is the emergency alert system distorted. The emergency broadcast system. Oh, these are just old. Stand by for and well, nobody yeah. has one on YouTube. Everyone's too afraid. All right, forget it. Oh, yeah, Captain Kipper has uh, one. Here we go. put that one up and people are just going to start laughing. Captain Kipper's got one. Let's see All what right, we get here. Hear let's hear that. Let's hear it. This is a test. This is old too, isn't this it? Station is this station is only a test. test. The emergency broadcasting system. If this, this had been an actual test. emergency, you would have been told what to do, where to go, what to take, and what to do with it when you got there. Then I will have to take the gun. Is, is this the sound? Yeah, oh this God. is the one I'm familiar with. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Maybe this is it. God, do you remember when stations would have to do that, like, two or three... It feels like they had to do it two or three times a day. Yeah. It did feel like that. Yeah. And I hated it. I remember thinking yeah. it was scary. I remember feeling weird about it. I didn't like it when I was a kid. Cause it was, cause it was such, I, watch, it, I was just watching the day after and this noise came on. <laughs> but it was so tonal, it was so tonally discordant because you would be watching something like I don't know uh, a Disney Sunday night movie, and everything's all happy and you know Disney music and commercials come on and everyone's great. Give me a break, give me a break, break me off a piece of that Kit Kat bar, and then suddenly the following is a her. It just seemed like the bad time to be alive, you know. Right, right. What's this? From Dice Tomato. Let's see. Oh. That's the Silent Hill sound. <laughs> I recognize that immediately. Ooh, that gives me some bad memories. I don't like Silent Hill. Ooh. Does it really? <laughs> never, never played it. All right, we're going to take a break and leave the rest for this tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> when we come back, Bill will be here, jury, all that stuff. So stick around, come back then. That'd be great. And in the meantime, Brian's got some music and he's going to play it now. What do you got? Sure. Future is the uh, experimental debut EP from a guy named Michael Blakeman. He is from Perth and uh, he's been spending years on various rock and metal projects. This is his first foray into kind of the sounds of the 80s. And there's, there's definitely kind of a... Um, I don't know, I would say like a Bauhaus, um, uh, that kind of sound to it. Mm. Really cool. Very cool. Uh, again, the album is called Future, or the EP, I, I should say, is called Future. It comes out this Friday, August 23rd. Uh, thank you to uh, the A&R department, the uh, record label that provided this. Here's Michael Blakeman. The song is called Brazier to the Lake. Sound like a beer can getting flattened. It just was crunch. It was, I hate to say it, it was kind of cool, you know? I mean, what guy, what, you know, doesn't like, you know, destruction? Yeah, you know, that's why we go to demolition derbies. But hey, you know, bottom line, that's that poor girl's new car and she can't get to school now. Never, never back up. 
<laughs> the morning stream. Can you dig it? back everybody <laughs> that guy's great isn't he yeah i love it I you can get to school now. Go now i think i have a shorter version of that let's see do i have a shorter version of that yeah here she can't get to school now <laughs> 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 oh i love it all right uh <clears throat> tuesday tuesday requires us to do a thing and that's to bring bill duran in here it goes by punish that's props right going to talk about some propage and some making things punish us with some props yeah that's the theory anyway uh we'll see if it works out here you go but bill just isn't thinking about danger bill duran all the way from seattle washington the beautiful northwest of our fine country here in the united states mm -hmm. of america he's with us once again sitting there in some kind of cool robe what's that about what you got going there my tier two paladin robe is Ooh, what that is. Yeah, oh, baby. Nice. Yeah, baby. Oh, nice. I've been wanting to get one of those. Every time I went to BlizzCon, I, I eyed those. I was waiting in line, doing the zigzag back and forth through that stupid line in, uh, <laughs> at the merch the merch area. Mm -hmm. And I always look at that robe and say, I just don't need another robe. Yeah. <laughs> How many robes do you I This is my only robe. Yeah. yeah I, have, like... I have like three or four robes. Oh, and it's only okay, because... Yeah. Tina made me one when we first started dating. I don't even know if I still have that one. Then I get this awesome, big, soft, fluffy robe that is the that's my go-to. And then she also, uh, when we were in Japan, picked me up a. Um, we talked about this on the show a couple weeks ago. A Japanese, whatever the the male ah. equivalent of a kimono is, and it's really cool. But it's not like a. I'm gonna go, you know, come wearing that when I come out of the shower or something. Mm. Right. Right. No, that's only for important ceremonies. Right. That's right. And then the neighbor, crazy neighbors next door, as a birthday joke or Christmas joke, bought me a muumu. Oh my gosh! Really? <laughs> did they really? How's they it? really did. How, it's I, like a weird red zip up. Uh, and it's, I hate to say it, it is perfect for when you go over there to their house for their pool, hmm. and you come out. It's like, yeah, I just put on the muumu and you're done because it's oh. absorbent and. Uh, I want to see you in this muumu. Are you willing to? I'll, I'll put on the yeah. I'll, I'll model the muumu. Okay. All I have right. To find All right. It. I, have to, I think it's, uh, I think it's hanging on the back of the door. So I, I would love sure to see you it. in the muumu. Please, yeah. please make that a real thing. Uh, <laughs> all right. Hey, Bill. Uh, what's going on this week? I assume you're doing some Warcraft stuff because look at you all dressed up. What's going on? <laughs> no, this is just my everyday wear. Uh, <laughs> actually, Dragon Con is upon us. Not this weekend, but next weekend. And I am working on a new costume. Mm. Uh, but I don't have much to say about it quite yet. But I did want to talk about Dragon Con. Oh, yeah. This, year, your, uh, this is basically your mecca, right? For cosplayers, anyway. Yes, it yeah. sure is. Um, like, San Diego Comic Con super fun. I've been to it a couple times. But I think I've kind of got everything out of that that I want. Mm -hmm. Dragon Con's always fun. Mm -hmm. uh, partially because we, we do a good job of making our own fun. But mm -hmm. I sell it so hard. The question I get from a lot of people are, well, what do I do there? What's so cool about it? What do you do at Dragon Con? Mm, sure. So I figure pull back the curtain a little bit for any new people, new people going to Dragon Con or anyone on the fence. I'll let you know a little bit about what happens there. All right. Lay it on us. Um, oh. So it's different than it's, it's fan run. So it's, you don't see giant banners for huge companies and big movie releases and all that sort of stuff. There's still celebrities and whatnot, but it really is like a thousand tiny conventions all crammed into one. And there's something for everyone. Um, they have their, what they call tracks. So if you go to dragoncon.org, you'll see there's a thing that lists all of their tracks. These are all their official programming. Mm -hmm. So we're talking about, let's see, what do we have? Costuming, obviously, I'm into that. Anime, that's cool. Fantasy, <laughs> literature, puppetry, robotics. They have kids programming. They have both Star Wars and Star Trek programming. Like they have something for everyone. Right, skeptic track. I mean, you really, it really is. A crazy variety of of stuff podcasting yeah. was always right next to uh the skeptic track too so you'd kind of mm -hmm. get like you know next door you've got um uh, the moon landing was it fake and then next door you have comedy 411 podcast <laughs> yeah. uh it's so cool so 
I go there for to get into costuming. I go to costume programming. I'll go to like some panels if my friends are on the science panel or whatnot. But for the most part, I'm there just for costuming. But there are other people that go there and just play tabletop gaming the whole weekend. And by the whole weekend too, I need I need everyone to understand that from about Wednesday at noon till about Monday at noon, like nonstop. 24 hours a day, <laughs> whatever it is you want to be doing that's nerdy, you can do it at Dragon Con for yeah. five straight days. Yeah. And it pretty much covers um, everybody. Anybody with any kind of interest, they're going to find it there if it's within this. You know, if you if you count yeah. yourself a nerd, you're going to find you're going to find the like minded nerd. Yeah, yeah. you'll yeah. find your people there. Yeah. So uh, that's all the official programming like panels and, and whatnot. Um, there's also official uh, costume contests. There's, I don't know, like a dozen of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but there's a ton of unofficial stuff too. So many fan meetups happen there. Um, a lot of them get arranged on Facebook. So if you're going to Dragon Con and you're a fan of uh, uh, Borderlands, all right, look for a Borderlands Dragon Con group on Facebook. And odds are good they're having a meetup. They usually do every year. And you can go there just chat with other fans you can if you have a costume you would wear it there uh fan meetups all over the place mass effect ghostbusters fallout destiny those are just the ones i'm into there's a marvel one there's a dc one they each do separate photo shoots and they're insane there's like two or three hundred cosplayers in these photo shoots and even if you're not a cosplayer it's worth checking out just because it's so bonkers to see that many like just Marvel cosplayers in one place. Yeah, it's freaking insane. I'm just digging through some older ones from last year, and mm. it's crazy. Like just. Oh, that's uh, I just saw a photo scroll by my buddy uh, Wayne in his Mark Watney costume. Very cool. I was gonna say you're gonna know, you're gonna know a bunch of these people. Is my thinking. I I know most of them. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're Mr. Knowledge. This will man. be our eighth Dragon Con in a row, I think. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So there's fan meetups. We're doing a meetup on the Friday um, of just Prop Tarts or anyone else who wants to come hang out and say hi to us. Uh, and then, of course, they've got, like, you can go meet celebrities. There's a whole celebrity area, so you can go get your photos and autographs with celebrities. Um, there's a parade on Saturday, which is insane. So if you're a, if you're in a cosplay group, uh, or if you like if you're doing Mass Effect, you could see if Mass Effect has uh, anyone representing them in the parade, and they'll have a whole section marching in the parade of just people in Mass Effect costumes. It's nuts. How bad does uh, everyone so, smell at the end of that thing? It's got to be. It's not great. It is Atlanta yeah. in it, August. Yeah, <laughs> it's not. It's, it's not even that. It's how bad do they smell at the beginning of that? Yeah, thing. yeah. because you get there at like eight, and then you sit there for like an hour and a half. Yeah, that's a yeah. lot. And you're in um, big, I, big hot costumes all the time and all that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see. A couple more things that are fun to do. They, they have a, There's an aquarium ne nearby that's amazing. It's just kind of fun to go to anyway. But they also have an aquarium night there mm -hmm. as part of Dragon Con. That's really cool. Right. Um, I've heard there's a rave at like 3 a.m. every day. I've never actually made it to the rave. <laughs> but if you're into that, they've got you covered. Um, and yeah, then really... Boy. And the after dark stuff does get absolutely nuts. Like it does get a little bonkers, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then for me, like my favorite part is just it's a costume party pretty much all day, every day for five days, specifically in the Marriott Atrium by the Pulse Bar. That seems to be like the epicenter of people in costumes, people having a good time. There's music, partying, and and my favorite part is hanging out with other cosplayers and talking about making stuff. Mm -hmm. So that is Dragon Con, and I missed a ton of stuff because it's just that it's too It's too big, yeah. It's too big. But I always watch. I like watching your exploits there. I always like seeing the photos when you get back, all that kind of stuff. So people have that to look forward to. Certainly you'll see a bunch of that at Punish Props. And uh, as always uh, here, you like to leave us with a little uh, bonus content. What are you uh, leaving us with today? Absolutely. My pal Joel over at the 3D Printing Nerd made a 3D printed Thanos' sword full scale. What? It's over eight feet long. Oh. It's ridiculous. <laughs> and what's crazy about this is how many individual prints he had to put together to yes. make that thing. Uh, oh wow! Oh yeah, it's bonkers. And so the model was the model be. was done by uh, Daryl over at uh, Broken Nerd. So he three D modeled it, and then Joel got the model, printed it, and put it together. Oh um, wow! Uh, Look I at all the the, the filament before he paints and stuff. That's insane. Look at that. Yeah. 
Wow. Okay, sorry. Go he ahead. He just kind of used up all the the ends of his uh, rolls of filament. <laughs> That's just awesome. Whatever laying around. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, I'm trying to get to the paint bit here. Oh yeah, there we go. Oh wow, that's a monster, dude. It's it a lot of work. It's a yeah. Beast. Yeah. Oh, there you are. You're in this video. Yep. So Joel uh, brought it down to my shop uh, to do a funny little bit at the end. So. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Joel yeah, was really fun. Joel like such great. a such a decent guy, man. Yeah. He he really is. Yeah. So like, anyway, uh, it's a full is, size Thanos sword over on YouTube. Look up Joel. Can you and, confirm uh, or deny that all cosplay slash makers slash prop builders have uh, they're all brunette with beards and glasses? Is that a, <laughs> is that a I thing? Love it. I love that you left one side of it completely unpainted so you yeah. can see how many pieces. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I oh, suspect that I suspect that Joel also got sick of sanding. <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably. Right. Oh, that's beautiful. S though. Sanding, priming. Uh, you forget mm -hmm. when when Thanos is trucking around with that thing you forget what a monster that sword is like that mm. thing is i mean for of course he's huge right but you yeah. forget how big that thing is and he could have gone smaller and scaled that but he decided uh nope i'm going full Why size not? right amazing this looks a lot better than the one on the the thanos toy that i have it's kind of weak the little <laughs> thanos so. yeah it's not Literally, so good it looks like uh <laughs> now i would have like foam that's a foam sword right there bill correct me if i'm wrong but it looks like you would have done foam here right this would have totally been foam yeah, I would have done this out of foam. Yeah. yeah. And it would have been about 150 pounds lighter. Yeah. If you would have done foam. And if you do foam, you would you'd have to figure out a way to make it rigid though cuz you this thing's so long, know. you'd have some stuff so what would you put like a thin layer or a thin sheet of metal in there or something or how would oh, you do Probably it? just like a tube, like a like a PVC pipe or something. Okay. Oh, sure. Yeah. Just All right. in the center, yeah. Well, now you and know what you, you have. Make it disassemble and reassemble really yeah. easily. There yeah. you go. You... Then I could have two still ridiculously gigantic swords. Yeah, you could probably take it apart and have a cloud strife sword. Yeah. You know, like basically you'd end up with two cloud strife swords. Oh my gosh. Yep. Dual wielding cloud strife. That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right. Awesome. Bill Duran, as always, this stuff's rad. I uh, wish you luck on your costume. You can't tell us anything about it. I'm pretty excited to hear what it is. Can you give us a theme? Like, what's the general? Can you give us any hints? Like what are we? Where, where are we? It is uh, sci-fi armor, but it is an original design. So oh, it's not anything you would know. Yeah. That's cool too. That's really cool. It is cool. I'm stoked. Is that a thing that you can see a lot of there as well, or is it always just? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. No, original there's a designs. lot, especially like the rave scene. A lot of people go real bonkers with the, with their own character or costume for for the rave. Yeah. Um, and that spills into the con, so that's pretty awesome. Lots right. of lights and like smoke and stuff. It's it's nuts. That's crazy. Hmm. All right. Well, everyone, bring your deodorant to Dragon Con is all we're yes. asking, please. Apply it from your elbow to your waist. <laughs> Liberally. Waist all the way down. Yes. There you go. Put it in your crotch. Do whatever you got to do. Build around, everybody. Punish props. Uh, dot com. You can find him at Chinbeard on Twitter. We'll see you later. Bye now. You know, at some point, you and I do need to figure out about it. Like, do a, a one Dragon Con live TMS show kind of thing. Just to... We got so many fans who can't make it out to Nertacular or TMS Vegas because they live in that southeast part of the country, and that would be a great way to, to do something for them. Good uh, uh, a good way to it's do the just, other side of the country. That's true. It's exactly. The only problem is that, A, it's Atlanta in August or yeah. September, and, uh, <laughs> and it's a haul, man. It's a haul for us. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. All right. Well done, Bill. Good to have him here as always. Let's get yeah. our pal Let's Justin Robert jerks. Young in. And Justin Robert Young. For Election Watch 2020. I think he wants to talk about Back to College Day. Oh, really? Yeah. So not, uh, we, we don't have the rundown now that Hickenlooper's out? Well, Hickenlooper <laughs> definitely out. I assume he's, he's, a, he's officially he dropped out. out. Yeah, he dropped out, right? Yeah, he's yeah out. He, he voluntarily dropped out before he didn't make the, the cut. Probably good that he did. All right, we'll play this and then we'll yes. talk to him. These are their stories. Do, 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 do. Oh, I'm terrible with names. Justin Robert Young joining us from uh, Oakland, California, uh, all the way from there. And it's good to have you here. Hello, Justin. How are you? He's muted. That's how he is. Muted. Mm. Muted. Mm. I don't hear He him. says, one second. Don't worry. We got you. We know. It's all right. Just Works oh, for yeah. everybody else. Push to talk. Push to talk. <laughs> oh, okay. Great thing that Discord likes to do. Well, 
<laughs> Wouldn't be the first well, time. Well, it is a gaming platform. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, that's, it's a good thing I'm the only one that has these problems. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Here's the, why, here's the real reason why you guys will never do a Dragon Con show, because uh, Dragon Con does not take place in Las Vegas or Anaheim. Yeah, exactly. So, Those are the know, only... I'm limited the to those two locations. That Scott goes. Yeah, it's the only... Pa- this isn't a Brian problem. I'm, uh, I'm physically unable to set foot in anywhere that isn't Anaheim, Las Vegas, uh, parts of Idaho, Arizona... Uh, there's a few and others. Folks, he's tried. He's Nevada. gotten on planes to New York. Next thing you know, where's he at? Anaheim Convention Center. I lost. It's it. like a Twilight Zone. Episode. No, I know, I know. Exactly. And if I touch, all roads lead to Anaheim. If I touch any, <laughs> if I touch the ground in those other places, my foot uh, burns horribly. It's like a horrible disfiguration. So it's been the real rough. Well, portal opens up in the ground, and he <laughs> steps into medieval times on yeah. a, a orange boulevard whatever it is <laughs> yeah it's kind of a problem but uh anyway it's good to have you here uh aren't you um i thought you were going to when are you going to austin that's soon right this week sometime friday friday uh, okay. yeah we have a live show there next tuesday uh that is august the 27th at the hideout theater we're part of the out of bounds comedy festival uh great value man you can get your ticket for 10 bucks uh, uh for us and two other comedians so if there's any frog panthers in the uh in in the texas area granted it is a school night but uh we are going to be rocking and rolling it should be an amazing show and again about the cheapest i mean i don't i don't think we've ever done a show where it's just us that's as cheap as ten dollars but because it's a comedy festival you get these deals dog mm-hmm. yeah that was a really good deal 10 bucks is nothing just well, why wouldn't you go there so go uh hey uh so we were I, I talked to you last night we were texting back and forth we yeah. always do this kind of like hey what are we thinking of talking about we want to talk about the mm-hmm. where we're at with the election uh, uh moving forward who's out who's in uh blah 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 there's things to say there but it's also back to school week everybody from high yeah. schoolers junior hires even grade schoolers and college kids all going back to school and justin has pretty much every year specific pointed advice for college goers so we may as well use this as an opportunity to not only uh have you do that again but it kind of explain your your thinking and uh all well, those college kids who listen to our show justin needs has a little something for you he wants your ear I, I have i have two perennially unpopular opinions that i like to just uh, uh loudly <laughs> pronounce uh one of them related to education and one of them related to uh, politics, but I'll save the politics one until when I can maximally annoy people uh, uh, as that issue gets closer. And we'll go with the education one. In general, look, uh, I have said before that college is a sham and that you should uh, understand that what you are paying for is far outstripping. In, in today's world, right? I'm not talking about everybody's listening. Oh, I paid $50 a class. Whatever. <laughs> Congratulations. I'm glad that you got to shake FDR's hand. Right. Uh, I'm talking about now. You know, you look at what these kids are coming out of uh, uh, school debt wise. You know, mm-hmm. I thought it was outrageous when I walked out of school and $30,000 in debt. And it took me into my early 30s to pay it off. Uh, kids today, uh, uh, they're lucky. They're, their jaws drop when I say that that I, I left with $30,000 in debt. So, uh, considering I thought that was a bad deal then, I don't feel like this take has in any way cooled off now. But I'm not going to give that now. I think I've said it enough. If you want to yell at me on Twitter, at Justin R. Young, tell me that college is the greatest thing in the world or you should go to community college or whatever. It's what you got out of it and you shouldn't change your mind. Okay, fine. Cool. <laughs> I'm really glad that everybody's caping up for Sally Mae and Freddie Mac. Uh, they've done such good things for our world. I'm very excited that uh, you're defending uh, naive and, or whatever they I mean because that's always a sign of a good healthy business uh, whenever you have to rebrand every five years yeah. uh, uh, because you are so unpopular because you're crippling an entire generation that's a great thing all right well, we're not doing that we're not going to talk about that today <laughs> you're already in college you're starting today I'm going to give you the four things that you absolutely need to do okay. all right number one college community college, private college, state college, Mm. any college. They are a resource. They've got a lot of stuff there that they don't publicize that you might never know. Literally, whatever you want to do, no matter how frivolous. I want to make rap beats. I want to shoot a short film. I want to write. I want to do uh, X, Y, or Z. Beyond the library, but oftentimes there, there are so many just catalogs of old magazines. There's old movies. There's equipment. I remember one time, at, at uh, uh, Syracuse, where I went, 
uh, we were talking about this comedy group I was in. We're talking about like doing like a silly comedy album. Yeah. And someone's like, oh, yeah, we can just book time at the recording studio. There was a recording <laughs> studio. At the library? No, I mean, it was part of some other college or whatever. Oh, and granted, okay. Syracuse is a fairly, you know, it's private, so it's got stuff. But I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. If I would have known that when I first walked That's in, maybe cool. I would have thought of a reason to get involved in something. And, and you know, listen, it's probably going to come at the cost of you having to learn some of the equipment. You probably just don't book time like you're Jay-Z. But, like, <laughs> there's a process, and it's good to understand this. So anytime you have any frivolous, stupid idea, just go and, and look for it. Mm. Like, go ask people. Try to find it out. And if there's something just lying around, just ask somebody, oh, can I just borrow that? Like, can I just sign that out? Nine times out of ten, the answer is probably going to be yes. And you are never going to leave college saying, man, I'm really bummed that I bothered so many people to take advantage of what I got. When you start looking at that debt that you have to pay down over the next three decades, uh, you're, you're not going to be like, man, I, I'm really sad that I bothered that, li <laughs> that librarian to borrow a camera. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your whole the the overarching point here is that you're spending a ton of money on college, so get get the value while you're there. Like get as much, of get as much, and can. that includes yeah. like if you find out there's free hot dogs on Thursdays in the science club, get in the get in there. Like take it all, get it all is what you're saying. Leave well, none, and also you're you're not going to get enough, right? Like spo there's no way that you will be able to leave that institution and say. I feel like I did it. I got enough of an education considering what I paid for it. Uh, it's just, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. All right. Right. So, so that's, that's number one. All right. Number all right. two, very easy. Just eat a pizza, a full one by yourself. <laughs> like no matter how much you think it's bad for you now, it's only going to get worse. So just eat a full pizza immediately. Like do it I while you can. Yeah. Like you're watching right now. If you're on the, on the West coast, it's nine 30 in the morning. I'm sure somebody's open. Just call them up. Say I need a full pizza. Eat it. Mm. All right. Okay. There Don't we go. even bother. No need to slice it. Just roll it up. Just yeah. roll it up. Yeah. There we go. Eat it. All right. I like this right. advice. This is good. Wish someone yeah. had told me this. All right. No, we can't. We can't do this, Scott. No, number. No, well, we not. can't exactly, now. Right? Now we're screwed. Now. All right. No. Number. Yeah. I mean, come on. You get a little older. Next thing you know, you eat a full pizza, and that's like six months of your life yeah. is dealing right. with the fact that you ate a full pizza, like exactly. you know, months and months ago. Yeah, you're totally right. hundred percent on this. All right. So, uh, give us number three. This is getting good. What, what's number three? All right. This one is really good. I can't believe I'm giving this away on the morning stream. <laughs> This one's really good. We're honored. Okay. Okay. Learn your professor's name. All right. Right. Learn the TA's names. You'll know them because they have a goatee and they wear a scarf. Spoiler <laughs> alert: the name's probably Chad. <laughs> okay. Just ask Chad. All right. Show up to class, and just on the way in, hello, Professor Blank. On the way out, goodbye, Professor Blank. What's up, Chad? Literally just that. All right. Now, a little bit of work up front to learn the names, but just knowing, being cordial, showing up. If you can do those three things, never stop. <laughs> Don't even buy the books. Okay. Wow. Don't do anything. Literally just screw around on your phone, <laughs> learn the names of the professors, <laughs> the names of the TAs, no work. Right at all. But what about tests and everything? How are you going to get all that I'm done? I'm glad you asked, Scott. All right. Number one, this is the the, the secret that you're all going to learn about college. It's a lot easier than you think. In fact, in many ways, it's a lot easier than high school. Sure, some of the subject matter is stuff that you didn't learn, but literally, if you're just sitting in the class, you're going to catch enough by osmosis that you're going to have a, a running head start, sure, right? Sure, sure. So then you factor in all the how uh, uh, overly weighted like term papers are mm. stuff like that yeah very easy to figure out you know on your own uh, uh putting context together uh, or whatever yeah sure context mm. write that out take mm -hmm. home finals come on those were a bad <laughs> idea when the library <laughs> before google yeah yeah i mean like let, let's be honest here folks like these are they're just giving these things away <laughs> at the end of the day this is the the re part of the reason why college is not as rigorous as you might think once you're in the class, it is to nobody's advantage to fail you. 
it's obviously not in your advantage. It's not in the professor's advantage because the professors are not being graded on are not being evaluated on how many people they failed. Sure, some people with tenure can just fail you for no reason, but they're never gonna fail the person that says hi to them every day. Mm. Because when you are in when you are in the world of academia, the idea, the vision, what you work for is this very, you know, it, it is like the platonic idea of Plato. Like you are just a wizened person as the youth gathers around you and you you don't teach, you profess. You're professing <laughs> these things. And and they and they like are in rapt attention as they then carry your seeds of truth around the world. And you are truly the glue that binds society. And then you show up and it's a bunch of 18 year olds that are more interested in finger banging each other than reading the required uh, <laughs> stuff, right? So it's like, if you can just give them that one element that one shred of hello professor blank they're never gonna fail you right. ever okay. it's the bright spot of their day know their name that's, what, yeah. that's it never study don't buy the book okay let me ask you this how does any of this apply to higher education if you want to go f to graduate school you want to get a phd you want to do medical whatever that changes right you oh don't i don't know that sounds hard it I is. Don't know. It is. I don't hard. know. I have no. I have no. I have nothing this for, for anybody there. This so is good for J school. Yeah. yeah. I got. Yeah. I, I went. So uh, uh, none of this counts if you want to do. If you want to be a lawyer, you want to be a doctor, you want to be something that requires graduate school. That's another thing that everybody always goes to. Oh, you have to go to undergrad if you're going to go to graduate school. Cool. <laughs> so for those eighty people, awesome. Go take school really seriously. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to ninety percent of people that go to college that are going to get a bachelor's degree, and then that's going to be it. That's going to be the end of their education okay that's and that's what i thought but i guess what i'm saying is people should understand if you're listening justin is not talking about that stuff he's talking about your four year get in there get out i've got the degree now dude at the interview sees i have it mm -hmm. i got what i came here for kind of approach is what you're saying did you do this or are you now saying this in retrospect going man i wish i would have done that because i know better now like, where, what's your perspective? Oh, hell no. Of course I did it. Oh, no. Uh, yeah, listen, I, I'm, I totally I'm not see only... Jerry using the professor's name. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not only the president. I'm also a member. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, God, yeah. No, that was that was an early hack. But, like, that was something that I learned in high school. Like, if you can just not be a, a, a real poop head to your, to your teachers, like, God, you can get so much leeway. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like, it costs you literally nothing to just, like, have a, like, Hi, bye, kind of relationship with an authority figure that has 90% control over you. Mm. It's so easy. And, and also, to be totally honest, probably a little better for society. It's better that you be a little <laughs> bit polite. It doesn't make you a worse person. It just makes you somebody who's not studying a subject subject that you're never going to have to think of ever again in your entire life. So, our, okay, so so let me ask you this now. So you you went through that. You went to Syracuse. You uh, did your time. You You got out. You're now who you are. Do you still yeah. have student loans that you have to pay down? Or did your skirting of textbooks and any of the other uh, large expenses, barring basic tuition, did, did that put you in a better position financially? Uh, no. I mean, I, I paid them off a couple of years ago, but I also went into lucrative money-making fields like sketch comedy and podcasting. <laughs> so a little bit longer. And game development on Kickstarter. Exactly, yeah. No, I mean, I went into the real the real uh, wildcat oil speculation of, uh, of, of of trying to be a sketch comedian at a of podcast. putting MP3s on the internet. Yeah, sure. exactly. The real, the real Bond dividends. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's that and trying to figure out your 90th cum joke. <laughs> wow you're up to 90 geez um uh, all right i mean that was in my 20s oh I mean, okay we're we're, we're 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 well into the six digits at this point oh my lord that's a lot of a lot of those jokes so all right well i think this is decent advice uh the reason i think that is uh yeah. my experience was similar i didn't finish but i spent way too much money and i didn't have this i didn't think about any of this in this way i thought term papers were super important I thought that if you didn't have the books, you were screwed. So I was paying 150 bucks for that stupid book uh, multiple yeah. times a year or whatever. Like I was making all of those choices. And uh, there are going to be some people who hear this going, ah, 
You have, you have no idea. My my master's degree has taken me further up the river than you'll ever reach or whatever. We're going to get emails like that, and that's okay. Uh, send them in. We'd love the feedback. But I, I lean more toward this idea that uh, we're part of a yell racket. Yell at me. Don't it, yell at the show. Just, eat, just yeah, hit yell me up. At, yeah. Hit me up on, on, on Twitter. It, 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 they don't deserve your ire. I've been used to it because this has been my take for forever. Uh, uh, but, but, yeah, that's... Look, and if you want to get a mask, I'm not saying that if you want to take school seriously, then don't, right? right. If that's what you want to do, then that's awesome. There's a lot of people that want to go to school and then want to be a part of academia. There's a lot of people that really want to make sure that their grade point average is at a certain level because uh, there are some jobs that do uh, ask about that. None that I've ever applied for, but let's assume that they're out there. Mm. Uh, at the end of the day, this is just for the people that I assume, because they are the vast majority of the kind of people that I met in college, that were kind of aimless. They were going to college because that was the thing that you did. Uh, 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 that was the track that you were on. It's what your parents had talked about since you were a kid. It was a big traumatic moment for the SATs. It was a big traumatic moment for applying for schools and for writing essays and for doing extra, uh, extracurriculars. From the point that you're at single digits, Somebody is hammering into your head, go to college, go to college, go to college, go to college. And then you wind up there. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, okay, well, then what is this? <laughs> like, yeah. like, what am I doing? And you kind of expect it to be spelled out for you. And, and that's why people change majors four times. And that's if I'm going to get back into my college is a sham argument. Uh, this is where I think that that schools and uh, uh, the bank, uh, the, the financial institutions that back them uh are are just taking advantage of a a, a a segment of our population our children that are rightfully indecisive at the age of 18 and 19. Mm. Uh, and so that one decision of like oh no i want to be in sociology instead of art history spoiler alert you can just go into those fields you don't need the degree get the degree in art history and then get a, a, a part-time job in sociology and you're gonna have the same career in sociology as you would have if you got the degree in art history or vice versa mm. uh you are taking advantage of of hesitation in our youth natural patterns of behavior replicatable patterns of behavior that in that instant the instant you want to abandon these credits in this totally arbitrary system that is made up by the colleges uh that is now going to cost you another fifty thousand dollars and like that's ridiculous to me yeah i mean it, yeah yeah i mean every time i hear you talk about this i i come away totally in agreement you know good part of me is like like carter's going to college right now and she's loving it and she's paying for it for herself but she's also kind of picking and choosing what classes she wants and stuff like that and she has always wanted to and so we're like and you know we support that it's like yeah sweet do your thing that's great that's awesome but if she didn't i i you know i i'm not i just can't be one of those people it's like ah oh, if you don't do the college thing then you're just a, you're a disappointment to everybody because it's just not true it's just kind of a racket you know like you can well, work. Look, I mean, again, I, I do think that it is a resource and I certainly got a lot it out of it. Yeah. Uh, but all the stuff I got out of it was not as part of the courses. I got a lot of stuff out of it that was that was around it mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, along with other students that were there. But it was not sanctioned by the university. And uh, I, I think I was better for that. Uh, and, and so that does color some of my my uh, my crazy stuff. I didn't get to number four, though. Here's the number four. Oh, There's I didn't know there was a number four. Holy oh. shit. All right. Yeah. Turns out there's a number four in a four. <laughs> four <laughs> oh, did you say four things? Three was okay. so huge yeah. we felt like it encompassed. <laughs> All right. Well, Stu, wait. Yeah, I'll give you. Here's a lead up for it. <laughs> number four. Go. Number four. And this is to everybody who's listening that is in college now. Okay. If you want to know how the rest of your life is going to go, you know the kernel of because it is from high school to college that you learn an essential truth that from compulsory education everybody shows up at the same time you're in multiple classes with a bunch of people sometimes if you've lived in the same town you're in multiple classes from the moment that you remember anything 
to this point in high school when all of a sudden everybody dispersed. And now you're in college and you realize just that little bit of difference between everybody's showing up at eight o'clock in the morning and leaving at 2.30 in the afternoon and what you have now where, yeah, you are living with uh, uh, the same group of people, maybe in a dorm, maybe not, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you might see some people, but the classes aren't as frequent in college. You are required to kind of get there on time. No one's yelling at you because you're showing up late, right? You might get punished by the professor or something like that, but there's no hall monitor. You're walking on an open campus. That little bit of daylight between you're in a closed system and now you're required to get yourself to a mixed version of that, that's the rest of your life. <laughs> the rest of your life is slowly getting further away from when, like, I remember one time, I, 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 you know, I was in college and I'm like, oh man, like how many of people that I thought of as like really good friends in high school did I have nothing in common with? Mm. Like I didn't, in fact, I didn't know if I really even liked them. Mm. Like that they were just people that we were sharing this experience. And so that was the core of why we were friends. Mm -hmm. That slowly drifts further and further away. The effort it takes to maintain friendships, even the ones that you really, really, really care about gets slightly more difficult, more difficult, more difficult until you find yourself in your mid thirties and you're reaching out to a friend of yours that you really care about and you, it's their birthday and you go to text them happy birthday and you look in the text message and you realize that the last five years of your relationship has only been the two of you wishing each other happy <laughs> right. birthday. Every over 365 and over and over. days. Yeah. Yeah. Just one screenshot of what it means to be an adult is yeah. five years <laughs> worth of blue and white Whoop, happy birthday yeah. 2012 <laughs> yeah <laughs> and they do it like, every year like yeah. all the way through 2019 that's what look, being an adult is yeah. so i gotta look back at my know, uh, i gotta look back at my text with justin robert young just to make sure <laughs> that that's not what uh <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me we've been doing yeah i'm I, just saying that that that's that is an element and so mm -hmm. if there is a, a a a moment in which you can treasure and understand it is that everybody that you know you will get further away from and right. that's not sad that's not happy that's just life right it's the fact so of life moments mm -hmm. that you have these moments of shared experience they become more and more rare they still happen but that's why people go to con that's why people listen to shows that's why they become communities online that's why they find to video games and then want to listen to podcasts about people talking about the video game because they want community, they want shared experience. You have an abundance of it now. So if you are starting in college today, then what I say to you in the corniest old balls way possible is enjoy. <laughs> yeah. Old yeah. balls way. I like that. It's a nice way to put it. Let me ask you this real there quick then. Here, that was a perfect That's old ending. man gerbs Here, Here's one more question for old man gerbs then. Are yeah. you concerned that there are some people who let's say their parents are paying for all of it so they they're good or they come from some prominence and they they got in easy or what whatever it is sure. and they're yeah. not having a good time and they're just waiting for that one excuse to get out to bail and they've only got a year left let's say six months left whatever it is and they're just man i just don't know I, okay i guess i'll push it through but then they hear this one episode of tms and they hear jo they hear justin robert young make this recommendation, say yeah. these things, give him the four levels of hell, whatever it was. Do you... Levels of hell. That's not what I mean. But would, <laughs> would you... Do you feel any guilt about the idea that you may have just been the straw that broke that camel's back? <laughs> no. Because I don't think that that is me saying that you should quit. This is me taking a value judgment, which is why, again, I didn't want to do the college as a sham thing. Because I do the college as a sham thing at the, at the end of high school when you're thinking right. about going to college right. that's when i like right. to do that is when you're thinking about doing it if you're here you're already there yeah. right uh and and beyond that i've never just said don't go to college and your life is going to be fine mm -hmm. my my bit has always been uh find things that you are even interested you kind of like to do and just try them mm. just go 
do a thing. If you ever wanted to kind of make a movie, make a little movie. If you ever kind of wanted to write a little script or, or do a little, uh, uh, do a novel, write a comic book, uh, uh, anything that you want in life, get into accounting, get into construction. Uh, uh, the fact that you can do that cheap when you're young, especially in high school, or if you, if you aren't going to college, you can try that stuff cheap. That's really, again, what I think is insidious, if I'm going to get into the insidious nature of, of our modern collegiate system, is that you are severely penalized for uh, uh, you know making having that kind of indecision once you're in the system? Because once you're in the system, then they're like, "Oh, you want to be a, a you want to work in construction? Well, then you need to go to uh, on the architect thing. Make this decision when you're 17 and a half, uh, uh, and now uh, uh, you know write a bunch of papers and then have everybody in your family get really excited that you got into one specific school." And then when you get into it and you realize it in the same way that you would in any job where you show up and you realize, oh, geez, that's what this is? That's not oh, what I, I don't want to do that. Well, now yeah. you can't just change. Now it costs more money. Now you have to reapply to another school. Now you have to disappoint your parents. Now you have to explain to your aunt at Thanksgiving who's like, oh, you know, your, your uh, grandfather's brother was an architect. Oh, I'm sorry, Millie. Now I want to be a bleep blop bloop, right? Like there's, there's just a lot of stuff. That is traumatic for somebody of that age. So I'm just saying, go out and try. Go try anything. Whether you're in school, if you're out of school, no matter what, try things that are cheap to do. Figure out what you want to be because that's the biggest thing that I've ever seen, not only in college kids, but also just young people in general. And I certainly walked this path was uh, uh, decision paralysis. Mm -hmm. That you don't know what. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to be. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Great. Literally pick something out of a hat. Try it. See give, if you like it. You're it always shot. going to learn yeah. something. And in fact, you're going to learn more if you hate it. Knowing what you hate can oftentimes be so much more important than knowing what you love. Because what you love can change. What you hate, uh, sometimes that's like hard-coded. Yeah. All right, well, all right. I'd look, could, be, could, could this show provide greater advice to young uh, college hopefuls? I don't think so. I think, I think we've done it. I don't know. I'm bracing for people because they always email about this. <laughs> and, I, and like Justin said, you can you can fund it all straight to him. Go to him on Twitter. No, you don't yeah, have to send us. please. This is all my thing. This is my thing. So go ahead and 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 send me that. Or if you if you are really excited to come to Dragon Con after Bill's thing, I'll be there too. You just kick me in the shins, and it'll be fine. yeah. It'll all it'll all be fine. He's, he's and then he'll buy you a drink. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No. I'll 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 just I'll just hold my arms behind my head, and you can just everybody can form a line. You can all punch me in the stomach as hard as you can. <laughs> Oh, man, don't yeah. do that. We I like think you. Houdini then, yeah, died. Then, this is then this is the year that I decided not to go to Dragon Con. Wait, Damn how it. come? How come he's wait? Jury, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you threw me there. Houdini died because people lined up and punched him. Is that true? That's not true. I not believe, because people no, punched no, him in the did. stomach, but he did die, die from like a. What was from it? Getting punched in the stomach or something? He yeah, did, no, but no, not part from of like a act. line of people. Yeah, yeah. it was part of his oh, act. Oh, really? And the people and, lined yeah. up. I don't know if, if people lined up. I think it was, if I remember correctly, it was yeah. like he would he Just would find guy, like the yeah. strongest guy in the audience and say like, ah, I'm Udini. You can, I'm a tiny little guy. Like you can punch me in the stomach as hard as you can. And so for whatever reason, there was like some inflated appendix thing that like ruptured and 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 that's why. He oh yeah, it says here he mm -hmm. he showed up that day with 104 degree fever, which meant the appendix was already inflamed. And then he took a bunch of punches to the gut, which just, mm. and then it popped. And then by the time they got to the hospital to take it out, it had already ruptured and, and like he had sepsis and yeah, I'm finding all this now. Well, that's awful. Well, yeah. well, well done. Yeah. Dude. I thought he died like getting, I got one of his dunk tanks and never came like out of it or something. Or something like they couldn't get out of a safe or something. Yeah, no. that's what I no, thought No, to be was. honest, that's probably what he would like you to believe. <laughs> <laughs> very, that's right. A very press conscious man, Houdini. I can't. Probably. Uh, uh, he, I think you are honoring his legacy by giving him a more uh, 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 amazing, death-defying, uh, death. more appropriate to his craft. I can't wait to go on uh, Penn and Teller Fool Us and just have my shtick be punch me in the stomach as hard as he can. Oh, yeah. I'd support that. Let's do it. Yeah. Make it happen. Yeah. Uh, I know, Justin, you kind of laid out your itinerary, but anything else you want to mention before you go that uh, people can check out this week? Um, yeah. The bird's Dr. like, bird's don't forget, yelling. don't forget. <laughs> Dr. Bird's trying to, are you get, trying to get your plugs in, buddy? 
Uh, I'll be appearing at the Chuckle Hut. Exactly. The- yeah. Yeah. Please check out my podcast. Uh, my SoundCloud. So yeah. yeah. Uh, I, uh, all right. So Out of Bounds Comedy Festival Tuesday, August twenty seventh. I'll be doing a live show at DragonCon Saturday at two thirty. So uh, mark that down on your calendar it's it's listed in there as jury 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 because despite the fact that i've done the politics show there three years in a row for whatever reason now dragon con decided that they don't have politics so wait it's just jury 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 that's what it's called i, uh, I uh, triple j is I'm, it that new podcasting track manager dude who is it is there a new guy? Don't even get me started. Because Dunaway, <laughs> Dunaway's not doing it. He's nothing to do with that anymore, right? No, no, no. no, no. Look, uh, former, let me let me just say this. Former show co-host of mine, Charles McFall. Oh, McFall. <laughs> yeah. All right. No, before before we before and I, I want this to get any. Don't get it twisted. No, no, no. And I'm not. Yes, I'm I'm jokingly saying this, by the way. Yeah. yeah. No, Charles is doing the Lord's work. There is a a, a labyrinthian way that Dragon Con is organized and. Uh, uh, there is a lot of stuff that is to no fault of of, of his own, but uh, as much as I love Dragon Con, again, I got married there, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, no, man. you you put on a performance of a marriage uh, at a show. It wasn't a wasn't a real wedding because they don't allow that at Dragon Con. No, yeah, nice they don't allow weddings, so we did the <laughs> podcast finale of our our wedding uh, of, about us planning our wedding wedding planning <laughs> podcast yeah oh, i Sorry. love that i love that all right well catch that and all other things justin uh justin robert young on twitter or justin r young on twitter rather if you're trying to find uh what he's doing also get results of what he's done and yelling at him for his stance on college yes <laughs> uh justin robert young thank you for being here we'll see you next time thank you professor justin robert yeah, young. thank you for professing bye now ah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked it did work all right let me fix your video there we go all right hey we're almost done with the show but i do have a thing i want to do real quick which is an email from a listener named mink m-i-n-k mink mink you mink. Ever, you ever been around a mink farm I have not, but I bet it smells wonderful. It's the worst <laughs> smell ever. It's so Listen, bad. Listen, I remember walking by the the little ferret cylinder at uh, PetSmart. Ba- yes, <laughs> imagine that, but amplified. It's that smell. Yeah. You're right about it. Yeah. It's oops. It's really bad. Uh, do not recommend being around a mink farm. Stinky, stinky. Anyway, but they have soft fur, and they, you know, whatever. Mm, sure. That's why they have nice mink store. farms. Sure. Oh. Um, um, <laughs> minks or sorry, mink wrote in and says. Scott, sounds like chat room has warned you, but I wanted to throw in my two cents. My mom planted bamboo several years ago. I loved it at first, but it started to spread, and we've tried to limit its growth with no luck. Uh, The guy they hired said, if you do plant bamboo, dig a hole that's about four feet deep and two feet wide. Uh, I could be remembering those numbers wrong, but it's ridiculous. As a barrier before planting the bamboo, Uh uh, or you'll never get rid of it without poisoning the ground, uh, signed Mink. So yeah. that would be the way to do it, right? Like have a, and and he doesn't say it, but I'm assuming that you dig a hole that's four feet deep by two feet wide, and you kind of, you know, use that lumber, that uh, wood technique of making a little cement barrier mm-hmm. so that the the roots can expand out into the rest of your yard. Yeah, it ent- sounds entirely possible. What it's done, in, in, what this email's done though, is further uh, push me away from us doing it at all. Yeah, don't I think, do it at all. Uh, yeah, I think I got Kim convinced that this is a bad idea. I don't think we're going to do it. Yeah. Listen, you can always just go to Pier 1 Imports, get some of the dead bamboo that they have there, shove it in the ground, uh, <laughs> selfie with it, and uh, and you're done. And then That's get true. I totally could. Remember when you could buy those tiki torches and uh, torches and that you, you weren't a zombie? Or a zombie? A Nazi? Still. <laughs> a zombie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, meant, I meant Nazi, not zombie. Yeah, they walk faster. Yeah. <laughs> Much more, faster walking. And more determined. <laughs> Zombie Nazis. Anyway, thank you, Mink. Thank you, everybody who uh, sent in feedback about that. I think we are not getting uh, bamboo. Good. It's fun, man. What we are getting is out of here. Uh, big thanks to everybody for watching, listening, pay attention, pay attention, paying attention today. Sure. Patreon.com slash TMS is the website for supporting us. If you would like to help us out and turn this show to even a bigger, cooler thing, that's the place to do it. Uh, it literally pays our bills and we really appreciate your support 
head on over to patreon.com slash TMS if you like the show. It's incredibly cheap, this show. It's insane how cheap we made it. It is. Um, it is. Frogpants.com slash TMS for lesson. anything else. Give yeah. us money. That's right. Teach us. A l- Jury taught us about college and the sham that it can be. That's right. Patreon teaches us that Scott and Brian weren't very good at this when we started it, so now it's very cheap. So That's right. go take advantage of us. All right, Brian, let's get out of here with a song. Uh, probably a request, yeah? It is a request, and this one actually came through email, uh, and I, we almost missed it. So make sure if you're going to make a request, go to uh, frogpants.com slash TMS. Mm-hmm. Look for the make a song request link. Yep. Uh, and use that because uh, I won't miss them if you do that. This one I almost missed. But Matthew Lawson wrote in and said, first, thank you guys for the content of your podcast. It is without a doubt the best podcast out there. Now the reason for my message. Oh, come on. You can lavish more love on this. We, we totally don't mind. Um, I would like to request a song for my son. He is graduating from Fort Jackson, South Carolina, from the United States Army Basic Combat Training this upcoming week, and I would love a patriotic song to remember the occasion. The song goes out to all the graduates of the 1st Battalion, 34th Regiment at Fort Jackson, South Carolina. I wish all the graduates and their families the best in their future assignments. Uh, Hashtag God bless the USA. Hashtag always forward. Matt from Kentucky. Nice. Dude, congratulations and congratulations to your son. Uh, That is fantastic. And... uh, uh, you know, it's tough with a show like this where we do the funny, funny, and I always try and play the the, the covers of, you know, Metallica and, and uh, uh, Miley Cyrus and stuff like that at the end. My library is not full of a lot of patriotic songs. There aren't a lot of songs in my library that are like, here's the, uh, the, the you know, University of Arkansas marching band with their rendition of uh, the Star Spangled Banner. I do have a few of those things but very few. Uh, This one, though, I feel like is a great intersection at the confluence of the stuff we usually play cover-wise and still is a very uh, patriotic song. Stars and Stripes Forever. No one could argue with that being a a very patriotic song. It's right there in the title, for Pete's sake. Jake Shimabukuro, who is the most amazing ukulele player of all time. If you have not watched a video of Jake Shimabukuro uh, and the music he plays... Um, his while my guitar gently weeps is one of the most brilliant things ever done on a, on a ukulele. And the fact that he does all of these noises himself makes all of these sounds, just him and a ukulele is absolutely mind blowing. Uh, here is his cover of stars and stripes forever. Uh, it was included on the 2007 song of America. Of course, it's a cover of John Philip Sousa. Here is stars and stripes forever. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. He's constipated and can't get the poo the full distance. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was me. I put I put that in random because I didn't I thought it just looked like a random clip. I didn't know it was me. That's hilarious. Oops. He's pooping the distance. He's going He's for, speed. for speed. <laughs>